Hey there, it's Ryan with iMinnesotaNice.com. Today, day 43 of 365, sharing one locally owned business every day for a year. I'm here at Northern Brights in St. Cloud. Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> Northern Brights is a 21 year old company. I uh, design and manufacture some of the most creative handbags, scarves, clothing on the planet. Okay, now we're inside. Yep. Your shop. Um, can you show me the bags? Do you have some bags that you do here? Yep. Uh, here are a few of the bags that we design and manufacture. This is called morphology. Morphology, the word means actually the study of form. Once this was an old sweater and now it's been morphed into a recycled pin that goes on the bag. All of these fabrics can be reclaimed, recycled, some of them are new, but this is morphology. I also do another collection called Northern Brights, hence the name of the store, and Northern Brights is a vinyl covered magical collage of lace, ribbons, trims, sequins, you name it. These little pieces have shipped all over the world. This is what I've done for um, 21 years. Sure. So these, I mean, you're making these collages on the inside of this then? Yes. And they're, wow. they're made one of a kind on the tables back there. Sure, so each one is unique. I mean, there's, there's no two like. I can repeat. I mean, similar, yeah. there's similar yeah. concepts, but exactly. not. Like, both of these are ice crystals, but they're still different. Right. They're the same, but different. It's the same idea, but not the same pattern. Yeah. Uh, and these go out all around the world. I mean, all around the country, for sure. Yes, and, I yes. Mean, I'm shipping nationally. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I have exported and imported. Sure. Um, but, yeah, that's what... That's How did you get started? What, 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 what was the driving force that got you started in that? If we went way back in high school, I'd started making my first products and selling them to students and teachers and friends. And I think I was bit by the bug early on, and that was to make stuff and sell it. It was very gratifying, and I think it was a defining moment for me. I didn't know it then, but I look back now and realize that first order I took in 1964 at the Hospital Auxiliary Gift Shop down in Fullerton, California, and she placed a $100 order for the paper mache pins I was making. It was like, oh my God. $100, and in 1964, that was like... Like a million dollars. A thousand I mean, dollars. <laughs> that was incredible. And Back when gas was a nickel, or what, I yeah, don't even know what it would yeah, have been. Yeah, a quarter. Sure, yeah. And I got bit by the bug that to make stuff and sell it. Right. And I always have, because I'm a creative person, didn't want to be regimented by... I refused to take typing in high school because I didn't want to get stuck as a secretary which was kind of really a stupid way to think because now I'm a terrible typist and I'm really sure, slow. Right. But so I live with that. I suffer with that <laughs> every time I t I'm on a computer. Yeah, but like, regardless, yeah, yeah. That's one of our, that's one of my burdens I bear <clears throat> sure, for being a creative. Yeah. So I always knew that I would carve out an existence for myself, a business where I would make stuff and sell it. I want to be free to create anything I want to and not do anything because of what somebody else is doing. I want to do something because of what I want to do or I'm inspired by mm -hmm. or what my drummer is drumming. Right. And not, well, I better not, you know, it, and I try to keep, and I do keep a competitive spirit away. I don't feel competitive. Sure, you're just creative. I celebrate all the other shops and yeah. boutiques in the entire region, and we've got you know some yeah. good ones. And I, when I say region, Central Minnesota, yeah. and the more the merrier, right. because we want people to have more reason to come to our region. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff. I mean, I, I'm looking around. There's a lot of um, like quilts and things like that that are just probably all handmade. And yeah, and the other piece of this is here at the boutique, I showcase probably um, two dozen other local artisans, and at this point in time, they happen to all be women. And their jewelry, children's handcrafted clothing, um, other hats, um, other knitwear, so uh, scarves. Mm -hmm. 
that are all handcrafted, one-of-a-kind pieces that are compatible and um, complement what we already do. Sure. And some more generic manufactured lines and, and card lines and... Just some other knickknacks that yeah, you want to keep yeah. in here. This is Northern Bright's production studio. This is my 150-year-old drafting table, which is kind of, I've been creating on this for um, 25 years. It's my main, main work table. It's got a lot of soul. I always think about the, uh, the draftsman or the engineer or the architect that was designing something on this 150 years ago. And, you know, his soul emerges from that wood. and Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, it's not a great piece. I don't tilt it right now, but the yeah. base is all cast iron, and it's quite beautiful. You know, actually, that base looks like um, an old sewing machine. It's got the same iron It's work. got the same, yeah. uh, you know. Nist to it. Yeah. Um, should I turn this on? But the uh, work surfaces all are all for cutting and patching and doing layouts. My bins are all full of uh, fabrics that are used in the various products we do. Um, I have a bank of sergers here that do a certain phase of the, the bags. Um, industrial sewing machines, compound walking puts, regular sewing machines, quilting machine, um, more storage area. Um, today it looks kind of crazy, but it always looks just a little bit like this, just a little bit off-kilter. You have so much stuff in here. I mean, it looks like my mom's craft room. Yeah, it's But about organized. five times the size. <laughs> <laughs> then I have um, the... This is the kitchen table. And this is where we um, take breaks and can have lunch and whatnot. And just the rest, it's, it's storage. My my 40-year-old sewing machine I bought was the first one. I still have it. My Bernina... My Berdina 830 that started it all. That started, that's, this is the, this is the piece that started everything. Yeah, right? way back when. If you back had. Back in the early 70s. If you had, um, one thing to say to a, a, an emerging business owner or some sort of a creative that's creating something, what would you, or advice to give them? Love it. Love what you want to create or do. Be committed to it. Don't do it for the money. Do it because you're passionate about that type of creation or that medium or that audience you're reaching. Because at the end of the day, you're going to put in 12 hours a day and sometimes six and seven days a week. And you better love it. You better be passionate about it. Otherwise, if you don't have passion, it won't carry you through. When I renovated this 100-year-old building, this building used to be J.C. Penney's. It was built in the turn of the century, 1900s, and then it was J.C. Penney's from 1925 to 1965. And then it's been an assorted bunch of different kind of retailer, you know. It was Warren's Shoes 20-some years ago. But when I came in here, it was pretty, there was an old drop ceiling. We took that out and returned the ceiling to the mm -hmm. original tin and painted it. Restored the hardwood maple floor, which is a 100-year-old floor. It's original to the building. And um, and then I hung five chandeliers. And one is the big main one, which is right over my cash wrap, and then four little ones that match. And I upgraded the chandeliers to real crystal, to Schwarzschke crystal. And it was they represent kind of like a coming into my own. Like, as, as an artist, as a woman, it's like, well, when in my future am I ever going to have five crystal chandeliers, you know? Well, so it was kind of like, you know, just blowing my skirt up and really celebrating the doing, because this is the studio of my dreams. This is the boutique of my dreams. I grew up in Southern California in the 1960s. And on Saturdays, my mother and I would go, um, well, we'd get up in the morning and do our chores. And by noon, we were done, and we would hop in the car, and we would go antiquing and boutiquing. So at that age, in the 60s, there were great boutiques on every corner in Southern California. And it got into my skin. I think that was another thing that always, at an early age, I just always dreamt of having my own great boutique. 
with five crystal chandeliers. And now I have it in a 100-year-old building in a historical arts district in a historical downtown. And here I am. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> what a good story. That's perfect. I think, I, and on that note, we're Can done. You put that I in? Think, yeah, yeah, that's okay. it. We're done. All right, that's it. I'm Ryan with iMinnesotaNice.com. I'm here at Northern Brights in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Come down and check it out and see the studio. You do tur- tours. Absolutely. Here. And I invite anybody back anytime. Yeah. Just no worries. Come it's, see it yeah, out. Yeah. That's perfect. All right. Sharing the best of Minnesota. Thank you. <laughs>